Hey everybody, I'm Misty Buck, president of Missink, and we're here for another Marketing Monday. I'm glad the sunshine finally came out. It was storming earlier today, so I'm very thankful for that. Hope everyone out there had a great week, and we're ready to kick off this week with an awesome guest today. I have Eric Dubois, or oh, Gros Dubois. Sorry, I missed the first no, part of okay. his name. <laughs> Eric Gros Dubois. He is the partner and founder of EPGD business law you guys might have heard of him he's kind of a big deal his firm is kind of a big deal they have helped out so many entrepreneurs i've had many conversations with eric and i could tell you they are truly truly passionate about what they do and helping small business owners and business owners really of any size i'm sure but particularly small local business owners um working through the process because we know it can get really confusing so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about how you marketed and grow grew your business to this behemoth that it is but yet it still feels really personal so we're going to talk about all that so eric with that welcome to the show why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself thank you so much uh, i've been excited about this uh what I've, you invited me about two months ago so um oh, wow. i'm glad we made this happen so yeah <laughs> my name is eric rodebois i am a business lawyer and what that really means is i only work with business owners so when you go to law school, there isn't a class called business law. Um, there are classes about like types of companies, whether it's corporations or LLCs. But really, when I think of, of as a business owner, you need to be aware of employment law, maybe intellectual property, contracts, maybe landlord, uh, landlord tenant. So there's a lot of different areas that we we help out our clients, um, which actually makes uh, my job really fun. I, I love my job. That's awesome. And I can tell every time we've had a conversation like that truly comes through. And I've been so thankful for those for those conversations. So, you know, we talked before we know about entrepreneurship. It's really it's really one of the hardest jobs. Right. And you know that in your own firm. So tell us how your firm started and how it got to where mm -hmm. it is. And then we'll dive into some of your your marketing tips and even some business tips if you have any. You know, it's really funny. I was having a uh, lunch the other day with a friend who's a lawyer and he's an associate. He's about 39 years old. Um, and an associate basically just means he works for a firm and he's making good money, six figures, but he really has the bug. He wants to quit his job. He wants to start his own law firm, oh. um, but he's terrified of taking that plunge. And um, as we're sitting there, I, there was literally a, a, a napkin and I drew on it a scale, right? Like the scale. And on one hand, I put freedom, and on the other hand, I put security. And that's really what it was. Um, and that's the scariest thing for most entrepreneurs is taking that jump. And um, you know, you can't go halfway. You can't halfway become an entrepreneur. Um, I see people a lot where they try to, mm -hmm. where they try to, you know, keep their day job and then build their business on nights and weekends. And personally, I don't think that that's a good way to be successful. I think that you have burnout to burnout is ridiculous. I think you have to go all in. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and by the way, you, you hit it on the head. I think you'll burn out, you'll burn out. um, cause you're trying to be two different people. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So going back to the beginning, uh, I owe it all to a good friend of mine. Um, I think, you know, him, Brian Barakat. Yes. Brian. And so Brian is the owner of a law firm. He's owned a few over the years. Um, and at the time, uh, I guess that we're talking eight years ago, uh, I was complaining about my job. I was complaining about my boss. And he says, matter of factly, why don't you just start your own law firm? Uh -huh. And so I listed all the reasons why I shouldn't do that. Um, I don't have any savings. <laughs> Instead of why you should, you listed why you shouldn't. I don't have any savings. <laughs> um, I don't have any clients. I'm not from Miami. I don't speak Spanish. Oh, um, I, I'm not um, married to a Cuban. Uh, you know, I don't have uh, family ties. And he said, all of that is nonsense. Um, I will teach you how to start a firm. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, well, um, you know, how do I do that? And he said, it's pretty simple. In the beginning, you're going to do it all by word of mouth, um, mm -hmm. which uh, I, I said, okay, word of mouth. What does that mean? He said, well, you're going to join three networking organizations and essentially you're going to do whatever it takes to get on the board, which is a euphemism for put in as much time as you can, work really hard, treat it seriously. Um, and so I said, okay, what organizations? And he said, well, you can pick any three. And I said, why not two or why four? You know, why not four? And he goes, no, three is the number. Um, and the three that I suggest are the Chamber of Commerce, a Rotary Club, and a BNI, um, which uh, I know that you and I actually were in the same BNI, but at different times. At different times, yeah. Um, and so, uh, okay, so three organizations. Um, and, and the whole point of networking, just to say it bluntly, is just to meet people. Mm -hmm. Right. To get your name out there and and to meet people in a structured way where my name's Eric. I'm a business lawyer. I help entrepreneurs. Right. Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, it's funny, I, I meet with a lot of startups and a lot of entrepreneurs today, and I'll ask them that question, what do you do? And it's one of Eric's rules. I'm going to write a book someday, Eric's rules on how to be successful. And uh, oh, if it. you can't answer that question in 10 seconds. What do you do? You mean? What do you do? Yeah. What, or like more specifically, like you're an entrepreneur. What does your business do? Right. Um, which is what service do you provide? Who are you helping? Um, and maybe some idea of the pricing structure. So I, I'll never forget. I, um, there was that bar on Geralda, the local. Um, I take a client of mine who's doing the same thing. He's quitting his job. He's starting his own business. And I ask him, um, you know, tell me about your business. And 30 minutes later, I still had no idea what he was talking oh, no. about. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, and sure enough, uh, he, he tried for a few years and he gave up and now he's working for a company again. Um, oh. So. Uh, so anyways, to, it's to not kind of, easy. It's definitely not easy. So that was the yeah. beginning. The beginning was that conversation with uh, Brian, with Brian, yeah. joined three organizations. Um, and then what I, I, I think what I did is I, I tried really hard. Um, and I don't mean like just working hard. I, I tried hard to be the, the best networker. So I have a spreadsheet, believe it or not, you're on it, of everybody <laughs> I've ever networked with since I started this eight years ago. Um, and so the, the, the vision I had was I would go to any event, whether it's I mean, basically anywhere. You could be in the grocery store and you start talking to someone, always have a business card. And then afterwards, it's the follow up. So it's the email yeah. inviting you to get coffee or breakfast or lunch. Um, I have to be careful about happy hours because once or twice I've invited a woman to happy hour and she thought it was a date. Oh, <laughs> I'll never forget. Is this is this uh, business or pleasure? And I'm like, well, I'm networking, so I guess it's business. For you have to be very specific. You like to come to a networking happy hour to talk about business, <laughs> right? Exactly. Right, like you have to be specific. So, so um, in any case, uh, you know, the goal of the networking, right, is to meet people, and the goal of meeting people is to get leads, um, right? I want a referral. I want to, hey, Eric please meet so-and-so, they need to look at a contract or they need to set up a new business. Um, and then the whole rest of the business comes into play, right? Because um, sales is not marketing. Right. Right. I know some people that are excellent at marketing and terrible <clears throat> at sales and vice versa. Correct. Um, and so sales is converting that lead that was the introduction of somebody I met at a BNI or a Rotary Club to turn them into a client, um, which is then, you know, a lot of other things come into play because you want to give excellent service because then hopefully that person can then market for you, right? Mm -hmm. Your past customers can be your best marketing. Right. They can walk around town and say, oh, oh, you have that problem? Call Eric. He's the best. Um, which then kind of goes into digital marketing, right? Because mm -hmm. now I start building my email database of all the business cards I've picked up along the way of all the people that have actually hired me or that I've consulted with. Um, which I know you and I have talked about, you know, the power of newsletters, the powers yeah, of social I got media one from you today, actually, you yep. guys just sent out a newsletter, <laughs> uh, right? Um, so that is, it's interesting. So, um, the one you just got is for starving artists, which is one of my associates. Um, it's actually a great story. So he comes to me and he says, Eric, I feel like I'm living a lie. Uh -huh. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, you hired me to, to be a litigator and yeah. you hired me to go to court and to, to sue people. Right. But in my other life, I run a podcast, which is funny. I think he has one of these studios set up in his home and, uh, and his podcast is all about uh, Latin uh, art and, and music. Uh, and that's where his passion is. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to marry those two things of how you can be a lawyer and have his passion for for his art. Um, and so we started in uh, entertainment law brand around that. Yeah. Um, so that was the newsletter you got. Uh, I haven't opened it yet. I just saw while I was sitting here before the show started. I was like, oh, look, I have an email from them. <laughs> um, and then I'd say just to, to wrap the story. So I did the networking for about 30 hours a week, mm -hmm. which 30 is 30 hours a week of networking for sure. Um, and one of the, the things that allowed me to, to grow the firm quickly. I mean, we're at about 20 attorneys right now. Uh, in fact, uh, God willing, they get their bar results today. So uh, I'll have three more attorneys if the if they all pass. Yay. Um, and so the way I was able to do that was just by not being afraid to hire. Because the way my vision was, okay, I finally got hired to set up the company. Now I need an employee to go do it. Right. Because if I'm the one doing the work that I'm also marketing and selling, right. there's just not enough hours in the day. Yeah. It's not, it's not an efficient business plan. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so uh, it's funny, we were just having a conversation with a gentleman uh, off, off stage. Um, his son is in law school 
And he was asking, well, you know, is it possible for my son to work? And that is partly or primarily the secret of the firm's success is hiring law students. Um, and I view it as a long term audition process for them to become attorneys in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, if you find a smart 22 year old in law school, they might not have a, a law degree or a bar, but they're 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 hardworking. They're right. honest. They know how to read and write and be accountable. Um, and so I can certainly have them doing first drafts of a lot of stuff, which then frees me up again to go do 30 hours a week of networking. Right. Um, but then here's here's like this was we stumbled on this by accident. The law clerks would then come to me and say, Eric, we're uh, we don't have any work. What do we do? And <sighs> I had to come up with things to keep them busy. So what I did is I would start having them as busy work, write blog posts. So right. we are over a thousand blog posts on my firm's website. And we are number one. If you Google business lawyer in Miami. Mm -hmm. And I don't pay a dollar for search engine optimization. Like, right. I'm not paying for a company to manipulate anything behind the scenes. It's literally, I went to GoDaddy, I created a website, I set up a blog, and I just started posting 600 word blogs. Um, which, by the way, uh, word to the wise, got to be careful because every once in a while, what these law clerks will do is they will then find a blog that's on point from another law firm oh, and they will. Yeah. Reword, reword it, it. Yeah. but guess what there are ways to catch if someone's just rewording yeah your blog and yeah. so first of all we've actually it's happened i'm not gonna lie we've gotten a, a you know an angry email or two <laughs> over the years and i've quickly apologized taken down the blog reprimanded the person who did it if they still work for me um but uh you know it's come to my attention that google will actually penalize you for doing that yeah like, yeah no, you cannot even stuff I think from on that you've posted elsewhere, you do not want to copy and paste that. Right. And well, and yeah, Google doesn't like that. Which is really funny. <laughs> so my first boss, a guy named Jeff Katz up in Maryland, he um he actually was doing SEO back in 2005. And back then, I don't know if you guys remember different ball games. People would like, for example, you would have text that was the same color as the background, right? Like a white background with white text. Right. And it would just say business lawyer, Miami, business lawyer, Miami, like a thousand times. And that was like tricking Google, right? Because right. then Google right. would be like, oh, they must know about business law. Right. But then at some point, I think circa 2010, mm -hmm. I think Google got smart and like their algorithms got better. And they're like, no, we're not going to reward that behavior. We're going to penalize that behavior, mm -hmm. um, which is why I think we kind of cracked the Google code with the blog posts is because Google is rewarding us for delivering valuable content. Um, and and I'll, I'll tell you how we do it. Um, so what we do is we'll we'll have a, a consultation with anybody about anything, right? right? Um, I want to talk to a lawyer. I'll, I'll use a random example. How do I trademark my brand, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so in that meeting, there'll be a question that maybe I don't even know the answer to. Right. Um, can I trademark my brand before I start doing business? Right. right? I just made that up. Um, and so I'll say to the potential client, and this is part of my sales process, I'll say to them, you know, that's a really great question. I have all these really smart law clerks. Let me have one of them do some free research mm -hmm. and I'll get back to you with the answer. And then, um, you know, maybe we can work together on something else. And so instead of charging the client mm -hmm. for that research, I have the law clerk go and I say, I'm very clear, like, go, don't spend more than 30 minutes. <laughs> and so sure enough, the answer is yes. Yes, you can trademark your brand before you start doing business. Uh -huh. So I call the client up. I'm like, hey, good news. Um, the answer is yes, you can do that. And then I tell the same law clerk, I say, all right, you've already done the research. Now write me a 600 word blog post on that. On that topic. Right. Which is super smart because your people, I think a lot of times get stuck on content. And so I love that you're taking this from real world examples using stuff that you're doing day to day anyway to provide a service and then turning that into you know though I, I think a generation ago or maybe less lawyers would have seen that as an opportunity to sell that research right like mm -hmm. i will go research that for you pay me two thousand dollars right and i'll go to the law library and <sighs> the reality is information is so democratized right. now Right. Um, and so I'm sure there are still lawyers charging for research. And then, and by the way, I always tell the client, if I can't find the answer in 15 minutes, I'm going to charge you for it. Uh -huh. um, but I, I think that I think what it really is, is an opportunity to show some goodwill. Right. And then, like you said, I'm, I'm using that as my uh, that's how I find my content, mm -hmm. um, which which, by the way, finding content, I think, is really challenging. Otherwise, it's and, very challenging. Yeah, it is very challenging. But I think when you get really good at listening, um, and just d taking what you're doing anyway, 
and that people, oh, who really wants to know the answer to that? People really do want, that's why they're asking you. So <laughs> I think that that's, that's super, super smart. So I, I love that you guys took that opportunity to do that. And by the way, I want to give you a, um, some, a compliment here because we're talking a lot about digital marketing and in-person networking, but you're actually, you're really, really skilled in other areas too. So one thing after we had a conversation once that was pleasantly surprising to me is you sent me a handwritten <laughs> thank you note. Do you remember that? I do. I, I'm sure it's part of your process for everybody. It wasn't specific to me, but that's always stood out in my mind and you have continued to stand out in my mind because you took the time to do that. So I just wanted to give you a little so shout out about that because I, I think that's brilliant. Nobody does that these days. And I think that that's, just a lot so I keep three ongoing lists. Uh -huh. I keep a list of everyone that I do networking with. Mm -hmm. That's list number one. List number two is everyone who sends me a referral. So if you refer me so and so, that mm -hmm. goes on a separate list. Okay. And then list number three is every new client. And then what I would do for years is I, and to, much to the chagrin of Drew Kern, is I would bring <laughs> a stack of of thank you cards to my BNI meetings, uh -huh. and I would sit there, and I'm I feel like I'm really good at multitasking. So while I'm listening to the commercials, I'm sitting there writing thank you cards. Right, dear Misty, thank you so much for getting together with me for coffee. It right. was really nice talking to you. Right, let's stay in touch. Sincerely, Eric. And I <laughs> I go through a box of friend? 500 business cards about once a quarter. Of the thank you cards. You yeah, know. yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, the the thank you cards. Wow. Yeah. So that takes a lot of effort. But yeah, if you can find a way to multitask where you're still being attentive, then great. <laughs> well, I, I think I lost that battle. I think they finally came to me and they said, Eric, it's, it's setting, you can't a, do it's that setting a bad example. Anymore. You got to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> right. They don't want us playing on our phones in BNI. Oh, BNI. But um, but but to your point, yeah. I mean, that is that is a different form of I mean, it's all marketing, right? It's, it's all marketing. Um, everything and, you do. And I've thought a lot about it. Like for example, a newsletter. You said you got a newsletter. Yeah. That means that you're on one of my lists. Right. Right. So there's a challenge to stay in touch with people who we already know, mm -hmm. and then there's a challenge to reach out to people that don't know us. Um, you know, I always tell the story of uh the young law student who graduates and his father gave him a check and said, this is the last money I'm ever going to give you son. And he went and bought a billboard on the side of the highway. Wow. With, he bought a phone number and a billboard and the phone started ringing. And here we are 20 years later and he lives in the falls on a, in a mansion on a lake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, smart guy. Yeah. That's I was going to say smart kid, but he's no longer a kid, but at the time he was, yeah. that's super smart. I love that. So, all right. So we've talked about, you've shared like amazing gems so far about networking and, and building your business digitally. So what would you say? So you did talk about that, um, that referral list, right? Of people who refer, how do you continue to, well, actually let me backtrack because we've already talked a little bit about nurturing existing relationships. So what I actually really want to know right now is, um, how do you go about continuing to meet new people to get them into your lead funnel and whatever your processes are? You know, um, I've, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. So as everybody knows, the world changed when COVID happened. Yeah. Um, and so I say I was doing 30 hours a week of networking until that point. So it was mm -hmm. about six years of, of me being out in the world doing that. Um, and with COVID, we all stopped. And then it was weird. There was that one week where the phone didn't ring and it was like everyone was, it, it was scary. Um, and then this really amazing thing happened. All those blogs that we'd already put out on the internet, mm -hmm. people were sitting at home, right? People weren't networking anymore. So everyone was just going to Google, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I, going back, I, I keep really um, extensive lists. Like I mentioned, I have right. these three lists. So pre-COVID, um, I think a good benchmark is August 2019. 70% of my leads came from word of mouth, like okay. people like you, and 30% came from the internet. Today, actually, I looked at August 2020 as, as kind of the flip. In August 2020, it was 80% from Google. Wow. So it went from 30% to 80%. And then here's the amazing thing. Numerically, the word of mouth stayed exactly the same. Right. So I still get the same amount of leads from word of mouth, but my Google's has tripled the amount. Um, yeah. And accordingly, we're, I mean, so it, I, I would say this to anyone starting a business, um, Brian Bearcat taught me this, your <laughs> business is your list. 
Um, and that's really where the value is. And, and I take it a step further. The value of your business is the phone ringing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's not historical, right? With the money that's in your bank account, you've already earned it. You, right, you did there. that work already. <laughs> um, you collected that invoice. And so the value of any business is the 11 leads that I'm going to get tomorrow. Um, and that's our number. We're getting 11 leads a day. And those are coming, like I said, this combination of word of mouth and um, and the internet. And, and so one of my big regrets is that I didn't start being really meticulous on tracking every lead until January 1st, 2019. Mm. So I have really good statistics on 2019, 2020, and 2021. I really don't have many statistics. So to anyone who's starting your business, make your lists. I recommend the networking list, the um, referral list and the client list and, and just be meticulous. And it just, it, it's like an ant building a, uh, building an anthill. They do it one grain of sand at a time, but you know, eventually they can build giant, giant anthills. Right. Um, so be, be just be systematic on keeping track of all that information because then, and this is where you and I can do cool things. Um, so for example, I keep track of the practice area um, the referral source, and then the networking group that I know the referral source from. So like, for example, if I get a referral from Deirdre Nero, um, shout out for Nero and immigration law, I know her from BNI. So then later on, when it's time to renew for BNI, I can actually look and, and keep track of how many referrals I got from any BNI related person mm -hmm. in any given period of time. Like usually I'll look at for a year. So when I'm deciding whether I'm going to renew or deciding if I'm going to invest in, in one thing or the other. Um, and so, so going back to drill down, so I could make you a list, for example, of everybody who's been referred to me in the last three years for trademarks. And so then we could create some cool, maybe a cool newsletter or a cool mm -hmm. thing tailored to that subject matter, because I know that's what those people were interested in. Right. Yeah. And that's, that segmentation is, becoming increasingly important. So I'm glad you're talking about all this digital marketing um, topics because it actually is continuing to become more and more valuable. And so I think we really saw that with COVID. We don't really have to rehash that, but to your point that that's becoming really important. But the other side of that is becoming not just like putting your message out and letting it go to everybody. If you can segment like a list, like you're talking about people who are interested specifically in trademark law and doing an email blast just to those people, or just, um, you know, a, a post that we boost on social media, just to people who are interested in that, or we create a lookalike audience of people that are interested in that you already have that are interested in trademark law. Mm -hmm. And then you create an ad for that might attract other people who are similar, who would be interested in, content about trademark law. And then you see how you sort of just like really drill down because everyone's so busy these days. So you have to think about how you consume um, media. And I think that that's a perfect example because when you're looking at so many things coming through your feed every day, think about it. You really only stop if it's something that is worth your time to stop and read, which means it's something that has actually piqued your interest because it's somehow related to you personally, right? Yeah. So I think that that's a brilliant tactic. Well, I mean, it's easier said than done, right? It and, is. It's um, a lot of work. <laughs> I, I don't know. And fr frankly, all I'm really good at right now is keeping lists. I don't think I've I've managed to manipulate the, the lists as well as I could or should or will. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, the raw data is there. Right. Um, which, you know, someday we'll we'll find the time and the energy to extract the value from that data. Well, it sounds like whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's... Uh, I like to think it's like baseball, right? If you're winning 51% of the games, you'll probably make the playoffs. Um, so, you know, you everyone go. isn't going to be a home run. Um, in fact, uh, so I now my my life is really, and I say now, so post COVID, um, I'm doing 80% of my time just fielding uh, consultations mm -hmm. from potential clients. And I know that we're closing maybe 35% of them, which means that I know that every time the phone rings, only one out of three is going to hire me. Mm -hmm. So two of them are going to be duds. Or, right. You know, I like to think of it as two of them, two of the three are qualified. One is unqualified, meaning that, you know, they don't have the resources to hire a lawyer mm -hmm. or they don't have a problem that I can solve. So of the two that I can help, I figure one of them is going to hire me and one of them is going to shop around and maybe find someone less expensive or whatever, you know, their, right. whatever their decision points are. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's part of the thing. And I think also the to your point about networking is just building those relationships and um, 
that's that's what's so valuable. The valuable piece about networking is just it's just building all those I, I getting to, to know people because you just never know. I'll tell you my my fear, you know, what keeps me up late at night. I don't want to be 75 years old hustling at the Chamber of Commerce, you know, with all the right. respect uh, and not not picking on the chamber in particular. But um, I, you know, I'm hopeful that I'm not out looking for new relationships and new clients. And I, I kind of have a different view on it. I think that when you're in your 30s, that's really when you build the relationships that you're going to have through your 40s and 50s and 60s. Right. But if you're just starting out later in life, by the way, I don't love what he said. <laughs> no, but let me Make say you this. fearful. It takes a lot of either, energy. Because I don't want to be like, oh, I can't do this. I'm in my 40s. No, absolutely not. <laughs> but, but starting from quote unquote scratch, yeah. right? Um, how are you going to meet people? How are you going to get your name out there? How are you going to educate people that you offer this service or, or whatever it is that you're selling? Um, that takes a lot of energy. It's really tiring. And so very, I'm glad I did yeah. it when I was yeah. in my young 30s. Yeah. Um, now that I'm in my 40s, you know, I, I'm like I said, I feel like I'm riding the relationships I've already built. But yeah. to that point. Yeah, you just have to be willing to, to take that chance. I think that can really happen at any age, by the way, whether you want to make a career change or you decide I'm going to stay in the same industry and become an entrepreneur, whatever, wherever you might be, I think there's room for everybody. Miami's huge oh. and there's just endless possibility for business. You just have to be really willing, I think, what it comes down to, to be disciplined and organized and just answer those phones and all that and i know we're we're getting ready to wrap up here they gave me the five minute sign a couple minutes ago so any last thoughts on yeah. that, eric on that point um a shout out <laughs> to miami so i grew up in texas and i will tell you that i i feel like miami is the most entrepreneurial place i've ever been I, there's a really can-do attitude and almost every one of us knows someone who mm -hmm. has started their own business right. for better or for worse right. um, and you know it's okay to fail if you fail you know learn from your mistakes and do it again um, but I, the, but Miami has such a, a positive attitude towards business ownership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I definitely think so. I think that there are just, I mean, you really look around and there's just, there's endless opportunity because there's just people everywhere. That gentleman we had on the show last week said he was growing his business literally by, he has like a stump grinding business and does some landscaping stuff like that to that end. And he did my trees the other day, but basically the way he grew his business is he, his crew would be out there doing stuff and he'd be seeing someone walking their dog and he'd stop them. Hey, I'm so-and-so nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Here's my card, by the way. So I think just being out there building those relationships, there's just so many people don't, don't let that intimidate you, but also don't let it stop you. So. If it's the same person I think it is, then you got to love what you do, right? Love, that's, that's definitely, you know, if, if you love what you do, then it. it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> it doesn't feel so anyway, well, some days it does, right? Yeah, sometimes some work is work. I mean, we like some to live this dream, oh, but sometimes work is just work. Anyhow, all right, Eric, so we're wrapping up. Any last thoughts here before we let you go? You have just been such an awesome guest today. Shared no. so many great tips. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, I know that you work with a lot of entrepreneurs. So um, to all the entrepreneurs out there, keep the dream alive. You know, keep working, keep fighting. Keep it going. Yeah. Deidre, Mar uh, Brian, we gave you some shout outs on the show. Yes, if you want to come on, you're welcome <laughs> anytime to sit in this seat as well. Love to have you guys. Um, thank you guys for being here for another Marketing Monday. Next week is going to be an awesome time. I have my guest who's coming as a comedian, but she's also an entrepreneur and a business. So I think you're going to really enjoy tuning into that one. So I will see you next week. Make it a great week and um, be blessed and be safe. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks.